Namaste, it's Sahara Rose, and welcome back to the Highest Self Podcast, a place where we discuss what makes you your soul's highest involvement. I am so excited to announce to you that my masterclass with Shaman Durek called Awaken Your Powers is now out. You can find it on my website. And this masterclass is for you. If you are ready to stand up as a conscious leader in the new paradigm, it is seriously a Pitta fire packed masterclass, all about really tapping into your own innate potential from my Ayurvedic and his shamanic background. We talk all about how to emerge as a leader, break through perceived blocks and limiting beliefs and things that are keeping you playing small, and how to truly embody radiance and success from the inside out so you can be a magnet truly for opportunities. And instead of, you know, going out and hustling after them will naturally just gravitate towards you. And just diving deeper into, you know, getting whatever you need, whether it's client gigs or corporate speaking gigs, but from an energetic place of just vibrating at that level that you will match as a frequency with the exact engagements or clients that you are looking for. We also really tap deep into finding your authentic voice so you can stand out in a saturated media place because you are so uniquely you and that will help you build and cultivate your soul tribe. We also dive deep into using the internet as a tool to raise consciousness and how to fully rise up into your embodiment, your truest form, the you that you are meant to be. So I'm so excited for this masterclass to be out. It has four 30-minute lessons a live Q&A at the end, which will be me and Shaman Durek answering any of your questions live. We'll have a private Facebook group to connect with the tribe and an Instagram follow train and comment pod where everyone follows, comments, and engages on one another's post, again, to cultivate that tribe. So if you're interested, it's only $35, the early bird rate before August 1st or $50 after August 1st. And you can head over to my website, IamSaharaRose.com. You'll find it. It's called Awaken Your Powers. And I am so excited to have you. Welcome, Shaman Derek, to the Highest Self Podcast. It's so good to have you here. Thank you. We just did an Ancient Wisdom Today episode over on Shaman Derek's podcast. If you are not subscribed, head over there. He just interviewed me all about the doshas and all about pitta energy and how Ayurveda relates to shamanism. So, be sure to check out Shaman Dirk's podcast, Ancient Wisdom, today to get a dose of that. And well, I'm just so excited to have you here. I mean, we've been hanging all day and we created truly this like incredible gift for you guys, which is the Awaken Your Powers Masterclass. And it is an incredible just experience. The two of us came together and we knew a lot of you guys want to step up to become leaders, to become healers, to become really lights and leading forces in this conscious movement. And, you know, we want to empower you guys to step up there and show up and shine your wisdom because so many of you guys have all of you guys have incredible stories and gifts to share. So we created this masterclass for you. It is a two hour masterclass. We talk all about these exact topics, which we're going to dive into more today. And there's also a live call component too. So if you love this episode, you love hearing Shaman Derek and I together, please be sure to come and join us on the masterclass. So Shaman Derek, I'd love to ask you some questions about powers because that's that's what you work with. Yes. So can you tell me just from the thousands of people you've worked with in your long career around the world, what is the biggest block you see of why people haven't fully stepped up into their power? The block that I see the most is that people get into a place of wanting to be stubborn because they live in a world where they feel like there's all these rules and there's all these conditions placed upon them of like what they should accomplish or what they should do. They have to pay the bills. They have to do, you know, the tasks that is necessary for them to survive. And you come to earth, you work to survive. It's not the other way around until, of course, you make lots of money. But even still, you, you still work because you're still, you know, achieving 
more in order to maintain the lifestyle that you have. So a lot of people, you know, get into this place that where they can find their power or bring their power back to them is they choose to be stubborn in moments when stubbornness isn't necessary. So they'll say, okay, well, I'm not going to go out and, and do this, or I'm not going to make this post, or I'm not going to go and connect with this type of person, or I'm not going to make that phone call. You know, I'm not going to apply myself in that way because they feel like they get a choice to make a decision at that time where they feel like in other places of their life, they don't get a chance to make that decision because everything is saying something to them that they have to do. And so the whole idea of I have to do makes them feel like, well, in this moment, I can choose to not do it. And they too choose to be stubborn. Well, what they don't understand is that it's like they're giving themselves permission to step into that place where they get to be powerful, where they get to be dynamic, where they get to bring their message forth into the world in such a beautiful way that it really inspires and lifts other people. But to get to that space, you have to recognize what the stubbornness is and why you're choosing to pull your power from that moment versus just pull your power from just going out to you know, a local park or nature or to the ocean or write a poem or dance around the house and you know, scream on the top of your lungs and sing to release that part of here I get to have my power through this instead of taking your power back by creating a roadblock or a stubborn behavior to you doing something that's actually quite beneficial for yourself. Mm, so beautiful. And I totally see, and I've done it. I think all of us have done it. We are afraid of our own power. We see how much power we really could have and already do have. So we create these mechanisms like control, as we were just speaking about, to block it. So I'd like to speak about control specifically because we were talking about that earlier today. Yes. Why? Can you tell us how when we try to take control of situations, we're actually blocking our power? So control in shamanism is a spirit that comes from the underworld, a spirit that is invited into your home. And when we say home, we mean body. So in your body, there are many rooms. And when you bring a spirit in such as fear or control or, you know, anger or hate or whatever it may be, they move in, they take up residence in your home, and then they start making themselves known to your consciousness, to your unconscious, your subconscious and so forth. So when you bring in control, there is a natural energy that takes takes place in the universe called alignment, the energy of alignment. I always say alignment over hustle, right? And it's like alignment, basically the universal principles operate in the understanding of evolution. Think of evolution or that alignment as a, a giant river that you're in. When you're holding on to a stone because you're in control with not letting the river take you, that's when the river, you get, you get batted by the river. You know, you get tossed and thrown and thrown under the water and dragged with the rocks and all this kind of stuff. And it can be very tumultuous and very uncomfortable for so many people. However, when you let go and know that this river is flowing this way because it's meant to take you to where you really want to go, but not the place that you may think you need to be, but the place where you need to be in order for you to garner the highest level of joy, sustainable happiness, sustainable freedom, sustainable prosperity, sustainable health, and so forth and so on. And so I, I, what happens is the nature of humanity gets into this idea that if they control something, then something isn't going to go wrong or something bad isn't going to happen. But in fact, what they don't realize is that control creates a blind spot in the spirit world. It means that you control something. So you're not trusting in the process and the flow that the creation that lives in you, known as your inner child or your soul, has already laid out for you to get to the easiest place in the most efficient way without pain or suffering and with knowing the right people that are in alignment with what you're doing instead of having to weed yourself through a bunch of people and having to navigate yourself through a lot of treacherous waters when you don't really need to do that. So so the idea of control actually creates a limitation in that blind spot. You're not able to see that you're missing out on a lot of opportunities or you've missed a lot of opportunities because you were so busy controlling everything. You didn't let the natural energy of alignment show you that the very thing that you've been asking for for months and weeks and so forth was already brought in to be manifested in front of you. But because you were controlling it, you turned the car because you decided to take this wheel. It's like if you're in a car. And, you know, I, I always say, like, if you're on a horse and carriage, you know, and creation and alignment is, is driving that carriage and just asking you to chill and relax and breathe and just think about all the beautiful things. 
and it's guiding you to the easiest way to get to the destination you really want to get to. It's picking up the people that are it's supposed to pick up to help to to support you on your journey. And so everything is just in alignment. And when you grab the reins and try to change it and say, no, we're supposed to pick up that people because that's the person I'm supposed to be working with. And that's who I really want to work with because I saw them on TV or I saw them do this and this is who they're supposed to be. But you don't know that spirit's like, no, that person actually isn't the person for you. That person isn't the one who's going to pour into you in the right way. Because I always say to everyone, everything we have in life is not because we didn't start off with it. We were poured into by another vessel. As nature pours into us to keep us sustained on earth, we're supposed to pour into other people to help them sustain, and they pour into other people to help them sustain. And the moment we go into this fear-based scarcity thinking, this idea that, you know, we don't have what we need, so therefore we have to manipulate, we have to, like, take charge, we have to, you know, get into a hustle with things, we are actually missing the people we're supposed to be connecting with. We're missing the opportunities we're supposed to be, you know, showing up at, and we're not allowing the beauty of the unfolding of these beautiful experiences that spirit has for us already given to us before we even came to earth that is in alignment. So we have to go through, you know, we have to go through pitfalls. We have to like navigate people's behaviors. We have to like decide, oh God, this person isn't the one I was supposed to do business with. Okay. I wasn't meant to speak at that building. You know, I wasn't meant to connect with this person, even though they're whoever they are in society, that person isn't the one who's actually the one who's going to open up doors and make things happen for me because they care about me from an authentic place. This person is just going to hoard my energy and take advantage of my energy because they want it all to themselves because we were not being in alignment. And so therefore we were not opening ourselves up to recognizing that there is an alignment and that if we just let go of the reins and trust in the process where alignment is taking us, we're going to be good. Mm, I love that so much. And a lot of what we talk about in this podcast is alignment and action and how action is really meaningless if you're not in alignment first, because it's just, you think you're getting somewhere, but you're actually going nowhere. Absolutely. I mean, I had a friend who, you know, always said, you know, I'm I'm all about the hustle. And I was like, yeah. And that's why you keep meeting the wrong people for business. You know, you met this person, they invested in you and that wasn't the person who was supposed to invest in you. And now you've become a slave to that person. They've been putting demands on you. You, You've had two ulcers in the hospital. You forced yourself to be with this woman in this relationship. And, you know, this woman has been driving you crazy when in fact there was another woman you were supposed to connect with, but because you were so caught up in the need, like I'm going to get that woman instead of saying, spirit, what is in most alignment for me? And then the woman would have came in and you would have saw that the one who was nurturing was the one you needed, not the one who was going to the gym and being active because you thought because you're active, that person was the one you're supposed to connect with. It was actually the one who needed to nurture you was the one who was actually going to help you go further in life. And, you know, and, and, and all these things happen. And I see a lot with my friends who believe in this hustle. And that's why I say alignment over hustle, because the hustle is old paradigm. It's the old paradigm. It's called kicking doors open, but the door is closed for a reason. If you arrive at a destination and the door is closed, it's because the spirits are behind it who are your ancestors and who are your guides who are holding that door closed because they already seen what's behind it and they looked at all the quantum levels of what's going to happen if you step into it and they're protecting you, including yourself. And so when you get to a door, the door will be open. It won't be closed. It won't be stressed. It won't be this hardship. You won't have to struggle. You won't have to fight for things. You won't have to do anything. I always tell someone, if it's a fight, if I have to struggle, I have to do that. It's not for me. Exactly. Yes. And I see this happen just so much. And, and it is a dance because sometimes there are challenges that we have to get through in life. And that's different than a door being closed. But I think... Uh, but I have something to say about that. Okay. Yeah. Can you tell us? So in shamanism, we say every challenge is self-created because you don't want to look at the truth of your being. So you have to learn some kind of idea. Maybe you need to right. learn self-love. Maybe you need to learn uh, patience. Maybe you need to learn how to stand in your power. You are creating those challenges. It's not that you have to get over them. You have to accept the teaching of them that you're not, because the part of that you're learning from it is already inside of you, but you're not shining the light on that part. So because you're not shining the light on that part, you create what we call an obstacle. The obstacle is to get you to look back into yourself. So it's always to get you to see the obstacle, then reflect back in and see if you're going to shine the light on the part of yourself that already has the knowledge, has the wisdom, and has the know-how. Most people just focus on the obstacle and don't realize that the obstacle was created by them. Mm, Yes. So well said. I want people to like rewind that and just re-listen to that transmission because the challenges really are just the lessons that we need to learn. And for most of us, they keep showing up in different forms and situations and boyfriends and whatever else. And it's the exact same lesson that you just needed to have addressed and gone through. And then 
either decide I'm going to move forward or this is really what I want to deal with for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And most of us, we want to, we want to move forward, but we are not acting upon that. We're not really believing that. Yeah. It's the same lesson, different actor. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's like I have a friend, she dates these guys and I'm all, so basically you're dating the same guy, just a different face. Yeah. She's like, what? I'm like the same guy, babe. That's the same guy that you just broke up with like eight months ago. He's just now has a different face on. He's a new actor, but he's playing the same character for you. Absolutely. And exactly. And it's going to keep showing up in more drastic ways until we really learn the lesson. And that's karma. I call it spiritual groundhog. Yes. So I want to talk about people who feel like they have a story to share, but they don't know where to start. And they feel like, who am I to share the story? I don't have a, a cool story. People are going to not take me seriously. What, what advice do you have for them? Well, you know, one of the things that we look at in shamanism is that everything you've gone through in your life is your shamanic training. And the shamanic training is like, people will say, oh my God, you know, I was, I went through pain. I was, my parents left me. I was beaten. I was molested. I lost everything after I made like millions and I lost it all. And, you know, there's all these really interesting stories, but what people don't understand is that those are things that have blessed you. Those are, we call them blessed up. Like those things blessed you. Those were your blessings because through those experiences, you've gained diamonds and rubies and gems and stones of, of great sapphires and, and so many precious, beautiful treasures from those experiences when you see the, that they were your blessings to being, because those were your trainings, which is your blessings to bring those diamonds and gems to the world at large. And so there is no one's life that is not valuable. If you are in a human existence on planet earth, then you are valuable. And everything that you've gone through is a part of that value. And that's why I say people should throw more parties for themselves instead of birthday parties. Cause like you can celebrate a birthday party and have cakes and blow it out and have, you know, presents and all, which is all nice and dandy and all. But the cool thing is, is that if you actually throw a party for all the things that you've triumphed over and all of the things that you, you have gone through in your life as beautiful gems and blessings and acknowledge the value and worth that you bring through taking on that journey by coming to earth, embodying in a human body and actually willing to be a part of that experience of taking on the suffering and the pain and the hurt and all these things and turning them into beautiful gemstones and rubies and emeralds and sapphires and diamonds and, you know, all kinds of wonderful things that can really enrich the lives of other people. So for you to actually sign up for that, that right there deserves a party. And like I say, forego the birthday party. Everybody knows that you've been on the planet and that, you know, you're just celebrating another time, another age, but celebrate your, your accomplishments and not just accomplishments where you get like a job or a promotion or you, you meet someone or, you know, you succeed in something. You realize that your accomplishments aren't just in those things. Your accomplishments are all the obstacles and all the things that you've overcome, all the triumphs that you've made through the difficulty and you're still here. You're still here. You're still here. You've done it. You need to acknowledge that and you need to celebrate that you did it. Like you did it. Like you're still here and you did it. And I think by that giving that acknowledgement will allow you to see how those diamonds and gems were, are to build the road and the foundation for you to create something even bigger, not just for yourself, but for the people as whole. Mm, so love that. And I would love to just throw a party for myself. Just like, oh my God, you dealt with shit and you overcame that. Let's do it. Yeah. Like Let's why? Let's do it. Let's like, do it. We just should just always throw parties for ourselves and it shouldn't have to be around a birthday or wedding or something. It should just be about living life. And I think that when you recognize all of the things that you've dealt with, it becomes very clear. What can you help other people deal I with? Think, I think, you know what, honestly, I think we should throw a party. Let's start a party. Yeah, when I come back, when I get back off of the off my tour with Guru Jagat, I think we should definitely bring your Guru Jagat too. Let's all throw a party. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm saying let's get everyone together. Let's do. Yes. Let's get all the peeps together. You're all invited and to our it's party. It's going to be called the I'm still here. I, I'm still I, here I, I party. Slayed it. I slayed it. You know, I smashed it. I slayed Slayin it. Life party. You know what I mean? Party. Why not? Yeah. So let's give each other exchange of gifts of something that's empowering to yes. moving us forward in our lives. I think that we should do it. We, let's plan it out. We should do it for the, all the Awaken Your Powers people too. That's fantastic. Awaken Your Powers fantastic. party. Yes. Love that. And all about making your mess your message. So a lot of people, they see there's so many things out there. There's shamanism, there's Ayurveda, there's Reiki, there's Kundalini. They don't know where to start. They know they want to do something spiritual. They don't know where. How do you recommend they begin that journey? You know, I always tell people, 
you are who you are as according to who you are. So the consciousness of yourself has already decided what it is you're here to do. If you just embrace the very thing that you feel most uncomfortable with in life, right? It's like, it's like lean into that inversion, right? And so for me, being a shaman isn't just about helping people, it's about helping myself as well. And like through the process of wanting to help myself through the things that I've gone through in my life and experiencing that and then telling myself, what well, if I choose what my grandmother chose for me, not only do I get to help myself, but I also get to make life easier for people. And that's really what I want. I want a life of ease for people. Some people may be like, you know, I played video games my whole life. What am I supposed to do with that? Well, I know a guy who plays video games on YouTube and he makes $3 million a month just by playing it and people watch him play video games. You know, it's like, you can't just say what it is that you're doing doesn't matter because you're choosing to compare it or reference it with someone else what someone else is doing you're not that someone else you didn't live that someone else's life you didn't eat the same food or go to the same school and play with the same toys and and have the same inspirations you may have had things similar and perhaps you did go to that person's school but you're still not that person and what's cool about being a human being and what i love about the individuality of, of the nature of human being and how god shows up in many forms and how then we actually operate from an individual understanding to a collective you know grouping is that each and every one of you has something inside of you that has come to bring something beautiful to the earth. But in order to do that, you've got to nurture yourself, you've got to embrace yourself, and you've got to say, hey, I see myself as I am right now. And if I was to embrace everything that I am right now and turn that into a brand, turn that into something that means something to me, what does that look like? You would have the answer immediately. Mm, yes, I think that... Intuitively, we all know, and it's sometimes we look at other people for an answer. And, and also it doesn't have to, you don't have to follow like one, just because he's a shaman, I do Ayurveda. We also change a lot of the things in both. Like you don't have to follow one school and like that's who you are. It can be a mixture of everything. Like go to all the classes, learn all of the things and then create something that's authentically yours because we don't need, you know, shaman number 576 saying the exact same thing. We need someone who who's saying it through a new lens. And the reason why we, you connect to Shaman Dirk, you connect to me, you connect with anyone is because of the filter they're saying it through. You know, we're all saying the same exact thing, just different language. Yeah. And the other reason why we go through it, my love, is because we come to earth on a planet that basically, you know, the people on the planet, the authority figures, they don't ask you what you want. They don't engage you as a spirit saying, welcome to earth. You may not know exactly what it is that you, why you're here, but as my, as your parent, as your guardian, I'm here to help you to figure that out. So what I've done is I've created all of these things for you to experience and you decide what it is that actually connects with you at the highest level and we will support you in whatever path that you want to take. So let us know what works best for you. We didn't come to earth with that. We came to earth with welcome to earth. You get to play a little bit, then we're going to take that away from you. You're going to be placed in an institution where you'll be told what to do. We're going to decide in that institution what things are available for you to learn. If there's things in there, that institution that you don't, uh, that's not there for you to learn, forget about it. We're going to also decide for you how you should be operating in life and what types of schools you should go to and all of these different things. And we're going to give you a test, not because we really need to give you the test. We just want to give you the test to see if you're paying attention to our rules. And then once you go through that process, then we're going to put you to another process. So first you're going to go through the PKs, then you're going to go through kindergarten, then you're going to go through elementary, and then you're going to go through junior high, and then you're going to go through high school, and then you're going to go through college. So a great portion of your life is spent in an instant institution that's telling you what to do, not asking you. And even though when you think you have the free will, or should I say, the ability to elect your classes, you can only elect what's available. So, and there's not a lot available. So you have your choices, but there are things outside of those choices that they didn't even consider, but they don't consider those things viable as according to what is known in the population as far as education and what is actually necessary to support the system. The only things that are available to you is what supports the system. I always love when I go down that checkbox when they're always like, okay, so is it education of this? Is it fashion? Is it the, is it that? There's never anything on there that says shaman. There's nothing on there that says like anything like alternative therapy. There's, there's nothing on there. You have to kind of be like other. Yeah. Right. And so a lot of us are the big others. And the thing is, is that because we weren't told and asked, you know, 
what it is, we created another blind spot to ourselves. We're afraid to be honest about what it is that we really like. So people always are looking outside of themselves to find out to another person what they like. Do you like this about me? Do you like that about me? Do you think I would be good at this? You think I'd be good at that? That right there is delineating your power and keeping you completely distant from it because you're still holding on to the idea that you don't know what it is that you really want to do when in fact you do. And that changes the whole ball game because when you're playing ball, everyone has their role that they're playing in ball. But if you don't know where you belong in that game, you can't, you have to sit on the bench because you don't know where you belong. So the guy is going to say, well, if you don't want to play outfield and you're not going to play third base or second base or first base, or you're not going to play, you know, the pitcher or the catcher or, you know, whatever, then, you know, you need to decide what it is, sit on the bench. Well, the same thing is with life. If you are looking for someone to give you a position that's available instead of carve your own position out, it's like, no, I don't want to play first base. I don't want to play second base. I don't want to play third base. I don't want to play outfield. I want pay pitcher or catcher. I want to be the guy that's way over there just like hanging out. Why would you do that? Because that's what I want to do, right? And that's where you actually kind of become like what I say is the soul is the rebel, right? The soul is the rebel because God never wants to play by the rules of humanity. It always wants to play by the understanding of its truth and its authenticity, meaning it's not even playing. It's just being. And what happens with us, because we've been programmed to play in the game of society, what's acceptable, what gives us love, what makes us feel good by, because other people like us and, and approve of us, everyone's always waiting for someone's approval of what they choose to do. And in this masterclass, what you're going to find out is that there's no need for that. That's not, you're going to learn how to carve your own niche, your own energy, and then make that something bigger than what you would have ever thought it could be and make it successful and presentable and all of these things because you can't live in a world where you're trying to fit into a box that was never meant for you. Mm, preach, brother. So spot on. I love that baseball analogy and it's so true. And I see it all the time. People are like, can you just tell me what to do? Can you just, what do you see in me? You know, and you, you know, I know you get it all the time too. And it's like, <laughs> even if I could see in you, even if I could tell you exactly, because we, we can see in people. Of course, I don't want to. But And it's going to take you out of your own power. And the whole point is for you to realize that and embody that and let that shift and move. Imagine if someone told you everything that's going to happen to you in your life, you're, you're like, okay, well, what's the point of doing anything? It's, it's the curiosity. It's the gift. It's the opening the door, seeing what's behind it, choosing, am I going to keep stepping forward? Am I going to move to another door? And that's what awakening your power is all about. You awaken your power through the journey of discovery. It's not the discovery. It's the journey towards discovery that awakens your power. Absolutely. And I think that what happens to the people is that we've become a people of needing to be able to be seen and heard by other people and getting validated by other people. You know, people always ask me like, you know, Shaman Durek, what is the path for me? Does spirit have anything to say about like what I'm here to do? And I'm like, what do you mean by that? That doesn't make sense. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, because it's not like this one thing you've come to do. Like, yeah, I am Shaman Durek, but I also make house music. I just recently released a record with a friend of mine who's a big um, rapper in the world. And I did the vocals for him on his record. I do I write children's books. I do poetry. I'm a poet. I do spoken word poetry at cafes. I sing country music. You know, I ride horses. I go and help people. I do charity work with the homeless. You know, there's a lot of different things that I do and if I help a guy across the street that day, that's my purpose. So it's like, my purpose is to be here with you right now, Sahara. You know, my purpose is to be able to be where I need to be that is alignment to that which brings me the highest level of joy and without you know, the path of least resistance. I don't need to, people, I always tell people say like, well, if you'd walk the hard road, it's going to open up to more successes. I go, that's the ego. Your whole idea that things have to be hard in order to get somewhere is the ego's idea that you have to pay it out. You have to pay the piper to become something. It's not about that. It's about being authentic and in alignment not seeking the validation of others that your soul doesn't want to hear from another person. Your soul wants to hear from you. Remember, creation lives inside of that little boy and that little girl inside of you, which is God. It plays off like a child to see if you'll have a relationship with creation through you. The better way that you could ever love your creator is to love what creation created, which is you. So if you want to know creation, 
get to talk to that little boy and that little girl inside and tell them you're smart, you're powerful, you're creative, you're dynamic, doors open for you easily. People love your energy. You walk in the room, you radiate, you have such beautiful energy. When you do that, the way God works is God doesn't work based upon your good or bad duality consciousness. God works by based on what you say to yourself. If you say you're smart, then God makes you smart. If you say things open for you easily, things do open for you easily. If you say people are thinking beautiful things about me all the time, you're going to start having that reality of people thinking beautiful things about you all the time. Your soul that lives inside of you listens to every word and thought you say and then manifests it as a reality. Why? Because in order for you to be an operating God from a place of creating divinely, you need to uh, take responsibility for that creation is in your thoughts and what comes out of your mouth. As I always say to my students, you speak into existence and you think into life. And so, you know, your thoughts, the way you think, it becomes things and the words you speak gives you wings. It, it, it's like literally lifting you or it's taking you down. You're either thinking in a way where you're creating new dimensions, creating new worlds, creating new opportunities, creating new ways that your brain thinks, creating that by the way you think, or you are thinking incorrectly and you're changing the chemicals in your body according to the way you think. And you're creating the changes outside through the polarities and energy buffers based on the way you think. If you think someone's out to get you, you just tapped into a person's consciousness who has the ability to be out to get you and you just gave them a signal of your frequency and now they're going to find you and come and get you. Why would you want to think against yourself and see what it means to get into a mastery is to learn how to be able to navigate through these uncharted waters and be able to, and that's what Sahara and I are bringing you, is to be able to give you a boat, a map, an oar, a survival kit and everything that you need so that you can move through those uncharted charted waters and be successful so that you can navigate yourself through infinite space and be successful so that you're not coming head on with an, a collision or meteorite or something of this nature because none of those things are actually necessary. They only happen. You only come onto a head collision because you are not navigating those uncharted waters correctly because you're not using your mind and you're not speaking into existence. You're thinking against yourself. You're speaking against yourself. You're saying things that are, haven't even been created. If you say someone's going to come and get you, you just now set a signal for that person to come and get you. This is not how we need to operate as human beings. This is not how we're going to operate as human beings. And if we really want to see a better life for ourselves, for our families, for our children, if we really want to see ourselves lift to a higher place of consciousness and be successful and have money in the bank and feel good and not feel this prosperity that comes and goes and waves, but it's a prosperous understanding of sustainability, then we have to change the way in which we are using our instrument, this beautiful body of intelligence. Mm, whew. That was like spoken word poetry right there, but there is a lot to that. We dissected a lot in the Awaken Your Powers Masterclass. So if people want more of that, go into the Masterclass. We talk more about it. But really what this is an invitation to is that you have so much more control and not control holding onto the rock, but like power over your life than you believe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we were just speaking about, you know, DNAs and cells before this and how inside of an atom, they used to think it was solid. And now they're seeing that inside of an atom, it's like totally, it's open. It's, it's just energy. And when you really think down to the most basic micro cell, everything we think is a static energy and we can shift it towards that thing that we want to do. And all it begins with is just rewriting that story, that programming in our head that says, no one cares about my story. I'm not special enough. I haven't experienced cool enough things. I'm not, I don't have a certificate in this, this, that. If you just reprogram, rewrite that, even if at the beginning it feels like a lie, just keep telling it to yourself, telling it to yourself. And soon things are going to show up for you. You're going to start to believe it. You're going to start to embody it. And then the rest will unravel. So I want to talk a little bit about speaking because you're an incredible speaker and you speak on a lot of stages and a lot of people have stage fright. They know they have messages that they want to share, but they're so scared of going on stage and totally blanking out or people laughing at them and not being able to captivate the audience. Well, when it comes to speaking, you know, I used to have stage fright. My hands used to sweat and my hands would shake. I'd start sweating like a crazy person. And what I learned about that and the way I actually got into that space is to realize that these people who come 
they have come because they have come to hear what I have to say. They're giving me their time and their space of their ears, of their mind to hear what I have to say. So it doesn't matter about what they think what they've come is they said, whatever it is that I think, whatever it is that I am, I've come and showed up for you to give you that space to share with me whatever it is that you want to share. And that comes from an honoring. It comes from a beautiful place. And a lot of times why people get afraid is they go into the situation wondering how people are going to perceive them. And, you know, and what my aunt said to me that was very pivotal for me in my life, my aunt was a world famous opera singer best mezzo-sopranoist in the world, same with Pavarotti, Placido Domingo, opera diva. And sometimes I would go see her, get ready to perform as she was rehearsing with Pavarotti. And she'd say, and I asked her, what's it like to be in this huge auditorium? There's all these chairs, all these people coming. What's it like for you to sing in front of them? And she said, darling, you have it mistakenly wrong, my darling, my sweet Derek. I don't sing for the people. I sing for myself. They get to enjoy it. And what that did is it opened up a wellspring of information for me, how I have to operate as Shaman Durek, how I have to operate when I go on stage, when I'm talking, when I'm sharing, to recognize that I'm speaking for myself. I'm speaking for the love of what I need to say, that I need to feel for myself and get out. The people get to enjoy that. And once I got into that space, I was able to own my space and claim my space. And then all of a sudden people started coming up to me like, oh my God, you're such an amazing speaker. Oh my God, I really loved what you had to say. I was so engaged in this and that and the other. And I was just speaking for myself. And it became this beautiful essence of me speaking for myself led to me speaking to others. And then as I got more comfortable with that, I began to look at language and communication as a way to bring out a box of beautiful types of tools. So I could, for instance, I could speak like this and be really calm and say, you know, we are at this time in our evolution where we are moving through the stratosphere. And then that puts people in a very calm state where I can now speed it up and go. And as we move through this stratosphere, we begin to extirpate all of this old energy and we begin to bring it into the center of our being and recognize the light is so much more grander and greater than that. And then I can stop it from there and then pause and then say, So raise your hand if you are ready to own the light. And I already raised my hand before anyone in the room raises their hand. So it gives them a signal to raise their hand. So now they're feeling engaged. And then I can go into, I can get really direct and be like, it's time for us to make changes. And then I can slow it down and go so that we can find peace in our hearts. And then, so it's like, you know, it's like playing with toys. Like you can throw an arrow, or you can have a bomb, an explosion. You can send them a zap of lightning and then you can send a cool breeze their way. You can send all of a sudden warm kisses upon their face. The idea of public speaking is about art. It's about playing with different colors and different sound vibrations and tones and how I move my body. I could stop and look at someone. I can move around from to the other side of the room. I could stop my feet when I say something to really bring an accent on something that I want them to hear. Public speaking is not about being afraid. It is about you showing up and knowing they are there because of you. Mm, So beautiful. And I love all of the specific points that you gave too, because it's something that I'm like, I do that. I do that. And you don't even notice that you're doing it because you're so in the flow. And it's almost like your body intuitively begins to express everything that you say somatically because it's the universe guiding you like this puppet of how can I fully express this message? And I think a lot of people go into public speaking like, okay, now I have to do my pause and look to the right and stomp my feet at this. And then they get so in their prefrontal cortex and it becomes so analytical. And you're like, oh my God, I didn't do my pause. Now I messed up. What's the next line? Never go off of a line, you know? Don't have your script written out. Have your idea and then let source come through. And again, it comes with practice, you know? Shaman Dirk did not start going in front of stages with thousands of people. It started with one person, That's right. five people, maybe 10 people, 20 people, keeps on building. And what I love about him is he shows up the same way no matter what. You show up the same way if two people show up, if 2,000 people show up. And that's what leaders really need to do. It can't be conditional. It can't be, oh, well, once I have a big crowd of people and all these followers and this and that, then I'm going to be my big, bold, brave self. No, that, that you won't show up. Those people won't show up until you 
start showing up for everyone that you come across. Absolutely. And it doesn't matter if it's celebrities. It doesn't matter about any of it, you know. And that's another thing, too, because a lot of times people think it's all about the celebrities. Let me tell you something. You can have a celebrity like what you do, but a celebrity isn't the one that actually pushes you to out there in the world. They'll push you in the way of like maybe connecting you with someone, but it's never like, oh, let me go and help you build this whole entire network. What they do is it's like you're just connected to them. The real message gets out through the people. And so it's about building engagement and relationships with the people. This is really important. I tell people this all the time because that's how I built my social media is by engaging with people. People, I want to know who's writing me. I want to know who's making comments. I want to know who's leaving me these comments. I want to know more about you. So I go on your page. I start looking at things. I start learning, oh, you have a child. Oh, you're married. Oh, how lovely. How does I say hi to your husband? You know, things like that. People love that kind of stuff. And we do talk about this in the masterclass. We talk about how in social media, it's not about making yourself seem like better than people or talking down to people. And you don't need to have everything be like a professional photo shoot. Actually, what people like on social media is you being a humble, grounded person who's just connecting and authentically showing up. And sometimes it's in a vulnerable way. And sometimes it's it's an, an incredibly amazing accomplishment. But that's really what people want on social media. 100%. So I'd love to a little bit more just about the public speaking points. I noticed that as you spoke about them, you were really talking about the doshas. You're going through the doshas. You do the vata, which is the more fast and the moving. And then you do the pitta and you hone it in and you do the kapha. And that's when the energy... That's interesting. I had no idea. You know, and I was like, huh, those those are the doshas (laughs) right there. But I think that this playing with energies is really important because a lot of times we show up like monotoned and not just in public speaking in life. We show up on one chord, on one level, our social media. I'm just this person. So I'm only going to show up right here. And you become one dimensional. You give a speech and today we're going to talk about da, da, da. You could give all the best facts in the world, but you lost me because it's monotone. So being a leader is stepping out of being that monotone and stepping into the plethora, the rainbow, you know, field of diamonds and crystals. We're looking at crystals in front of us, but playing with all of those crystals and saying, right now I'm a tourmaline and right now I'm an amethyst and bringing that forth because, you know, when you're sitting with your friend, your friend is not like so dark today, da, da, da. your friend, that's how we engage in nature. So I think we have to not be afraid of showing different sides and different spectrums of us and seeing that really a leader in today's world is that person that shows their weaknesses, strengths, all sides and spectrums of them. And in the past, I know it hasn't been like that. It's always been the celebrity, the president, they all seem perfect. But with social media, it's changing. The veil is lifting and people want more. Yeah, I 100% agree. And I think that I think what happens is that people get really self-conscious about the fact that they're doing something right. I remember one time I was speaking at Lightning in the Bottle. So I think it was, I guess I was like, I think it was like maybe like 6,000 people. It was a lot of people. And I got on stage and my brain just went blank. So I said, Beeble, Bobble, Beeble, Bobble, Beeble, Bobble, Beeble, Bobble, Beeble, Bobble, Beeble. And I told the people, that's what's happening right now because I totally forgot what I was going to talk to you about. <laughs> and I started laughing and everyone started clapping and going, yeah. And like, because it was real, it was honest. And even the honesty aspect in public speaking makes people feel really good because you're coming in authentic. And then all of a sudden, as soon as we cl- they clapped and laughed and everything, and then it all came back to me. And, you know, and sometimes that happens. And one time I was speaking to, in Iceland to 20,000 people and uh, my hands were sweating and it was just like, I could feel myself, my hands getting wetter and wetter and so forth. And my publicist looks at me and my manager looks at me and, you know, she's like, you're going on in like five minutes. I go, five minutes. Okay, five minutes. What I'm going to do five minutes to stop the sweating and really get up there in front of all those people. And then I said, I know what I need to do. I need to uh, word myself up. So wording myself up, I took a like, went on the side of the stage. It was a main stage. Kellis was supposed to come on right after I speak. And so... I literally went on the side stage and I was like, when you go up there, sweetheart, you're going to be so grounded and you're going to be so locked into who you are. Your heart's going to be so open. The love is going to stream out to all the Icelandic people. They're going to feel your love. People are going to cry. They're going to shout. They're going to be so excited by everything they're hearing you say. You're going to reach into the hearts of these people and they're going to remember this for a long time. And you're going to feel so at ease and so at peace. I love you. I believe in you. I know 
you and I'm here with you. And immediately my hands stopped sweating. All the fear went away. I grabbed the microphone. The guy goes, are we ready? We got one minute. I said, let's do it. Walked up and I said, hello, Icelandic people. And, you know, I started talking to them about, you know, things in their culture and life and so forth. And everyone was like crying and screaming and people came up to me and said that was the best speech I've ever heard, you know, and then Kellis came on with the music right after and, you know, they took that whole speech and made it a part of their campaign. It's like, it's the most beautiful campaign is of me speaking. And to this day, people still talk about it in Iceland about how it was the most moving speech they ever heard. But it was because I had a conversation with myself. I engaged my fear. I engaged my fear with love. I took myself aside and said, look, I love you. I'm here with you. You're gonna, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna go up there and make beautiful things happen. People are gonna love you. You're gonna be fully grounded. You're fully in your body. Like I was having that conversation. I had a word up moment with myself. And I do that a lot, you know, when I notice like if I'm going on a TV show or I'm about to step on stage or, you know, like for instance on, you know, this week I have this show that I'm going on The Doctors. You know, and I was talking to you about it today. And it's like, yeah, do I have anxieties about it? Of course I do, yeah. But I know that I'm going to go and talk to myself and like, you know, when I get to the studio and get all the makeup and the clothes and all that stuff and when I'm ready, I'm going to have that word up moment with myself again and then everything is going to go smooth. I'm going to go on the show, I'm going to rock it, it's going to be really great. And it's the same, it's the same thing. And every time someone puts a camera on me or does any kind of interview with me, whatever, that comes up, you know. I mean, I remember, I think it was, was it Tom Hanks who said that he used to get nervous all the time before going in front of people, but then he would just take himself aside and have a talk with himself and then everything would be fine you know so for me i think that if we just be gentle with ourselves and nurturing with ourselves in our processes of fear you know the fear of calling someone or the fear of speaking on stage or the fear of like whatever it may be that brings up any form of fear you can nurture yourself out of fear through just nurturing yourself with words that inspire you and show love to you and be gentle with you you're going to see fear less showing up in your life and you're going to see more courage confidence and and perseverance of what it is you desire to do because you're going to become your best cheerleader your best friend Mm, I love that so much. And it's such a testament, the fact that you moved through the fear. And even though you were scared to go on stage, you talked yourself through it. Because of that, all of these people had an incredible speech that created a ripple effect that they're still thinking and watching today, which wouldn't have happened if you surrendered to the fear and said, okay, you're right. I'm not going to go on that stage. Cancel. So every time that we submit to our fear and we think our fear is greater than our strengths, it's not just us missing out. It's all of the people who we would have affected. So when you think about that, what a great responsibility it really is to step up to your power because there's all of these people who are waiting to hear your wisdom. I mean, imagine if Shaman Derek and I were both like, I don't know if we're going to do this masterclass. You know, we don't have that much time to prepare it, you know, because we didn't have any, we didn't prepare it at all. We just went and we did it. And of course, the night before, we were both like, what are we even going to say? We're like, you know what? We're just going to trust that it's going to come through. And it came through. So you just keep rolling with it. You, People expect, when does anxiety ever go away? It doesn't ever totally go away, but you learn how to move through it. And one thing that I always do whenever I'm about going to speak somewhere and I'm feeling nervous, I just notice in my body, nervousness is the same energy as excitement. So what I'm feeling right now, the heart, the palms, this is also the feeling I get when I'm about to go on a roller coaster or when I'm about to like, you know, jump off of a, a high cliff and into the water. It's the same exact thing. So instead I say, I'm so excited right now. My body is feeling excitement and this is going to go so great. And just making that shift of the same energy towards its positive spectrum changes your whole relationship with it. Yes, it does. Yes. So I'm so excited for this masterclass. And I just want you to speak to who do you think that this masterclass is best for? I think this masterclass is best for anyone who really wants to take themselves and to get leveled up to the next level. This is for anyone who really wants to bring their message out to the world, see themselves and know themselves as a voice, as a healer, as a teacher, as a leader, and as someone who's here to really bring their spirit on earth to a way where they can bring their knowledge, wisdom, and their know-how through. It doesn't even have to be a healer. It could be a welder. It could be a person who's starting a skateboard company. It could be anyone who really wants to understand how do I facilitate 
myself, my vision, my brand, and who I am, even if I don't even know what my vision is or know my brand, this masterclass is gonna open that up for you. And it's gonna give you the direction that you need to be able to step into that place with assurance and knowing that the sincere nature of your being is being brought forth to say, hey, you know what? You're gonna be given the tools that you need so that you can sit back and say, I got this, right? You know, and having that self-assurance is truly the greatest thing that you can ever do for your being is to recognize the power of you and to live that power of you in every moment. And so this is what this is all about. And like what Sahara and I created is genius. And it is about really putting the power back in people's hands and not, you know, playing games and like, you know, guessing and like, how did they do this? And how do you do this? And, you know, we answer those questions and we give you very, you know, concise tools to be able to navigate your life in the most easy and efficient way where there isn't problems of that you have to go through in order to make these things happen. All you simply have to do is follow the steps and start operating from your authenticity within those steps and you're going to see everything come manifest and come easily and effortlessly. And that's what it's about, people. It's about making life easy. No one wants to sit back and just like wonder how they're going to do something when they have so many beautiful things they want to bring through their being. That's the worst feeling in the whole world is to know that you've got all this beautiful energy you want to bring into your life and you just are so clueless or directionless of how you really want to bring that in. And what we're basically doing is saying, hey, you know what we're going to do for you? We're going to create a structure for you, a structure that gives you a very simple process for you to be able to take all that beauty, all that love, all that everything, all that oomph and just bring it into something that we've created for you that's going to magnify that in your life in a way that allows you to see success, sustainable prosperity, happiness, growth in your brand and everything. And I think that is really what it comes down to is having mentors like us come in who love you unconditionally and want to see you succeed. You know, like I always tell people, like if you're not on a podcast and you feel like you have something to say, like I was saying last night with my friend Luke, get on a podcast. It's still, and everyone's like, oh, it's so saturated. And like, no, it's really not. It's still in baby form. Like there's still all this like growth being available and you're missing out just by sitting there actually doing nothing. So to take this course, to be a part of what we created together and both of us bring such a beautiful energy together that's so profound and so needed and so yet, you know, symbiotic from our both of our perspectives and understandings of life that we get to bring that together to you. You're not getting one, you're getting two powerful, amazing people who love you unconditionally and want to see you grow and expound into higher heights that you can. So I don't see why there should be any problem with you recognizing what's capable for you in this world when something is being offered to you. I love that so much. And it really is just as much of an energetic transmission for people as it is like, informational and like actionable steps to take because sure. it's both. It's the big picture and it's also the, okay, how do we navigate? We talk about some personal stuff in there, you know, yeah. things that we've had to overcome, stuff that we've never shared anywhere else, but you'll learn in this really sacred container that we've created. And we hope it's the beginning of really so much more. And we're so looking forward to hearing even months from now, after you graduate from this master class, to see what you do with it, because that's really where the yeah, real work the starts coming. Yeah, that's the fun for me. In. Yeah. I love seeing people get shifted and lifted. And to answer your questions, because we will be doing the live webinar where you'll be able to ask us questions. We're going to answer them, and just to have that live interaction. I think, especially in today's social media world, that's really so important. So, if you are thinking of joining, please come on in. It is on both of our websites, on both of our Instagram bios. You'll find it there. You can click on the bio link of this episode. You'll find the link. Please join us. And also it's just going to be for a limited time. We This is not going to be running all year because we're going to be doing the live component. So if you're feeling the call, you want to join us, please take this opportunity to say yes to your soul's higher purpose. So thank you so much, Shaman Derek, for sharing your wisdom with us, for really warding us all up. I feel the fire and the juice is flowing already. And we are so grateful to really have your wisdom in this time and age, and especially in this form that you are bringing in and the shamanic wisdom through social media and podcasting and really this technical thing that a lot of shamans shy away from. So thank you for owning up and learning about these new technologies so you can allow this voice to shine 
past its ever perceived boundaries. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that you say that because I remember when a friend of mine said, you need to get on social media. I'm like, I don't want to get on social media. I'm a shaman. I don't have time for that. They're like, oh, you should let a piece of person write an article about you. I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't want anyone to write an article about me. I'm a shaman. If they really need me, they'll find me. And then my friend from Iran said to me, she goes, honey, these things are being presented to you because spirit wants you to utilize them to support people. You have to look at where we're at in our evolution. I know you want people to like find you in the woodworks and then you feel like they're worthy to like be able to work with you. You need to let that go. That's also ego. And I was just like, ah, oh, interesting. And I got on it and I did it. And you know, for me, I'm the better for it because I'm, I feel really good to be able to reach across the sea to someone who's in New Zealand or Australia or somewhere else in the world and be able to give them love and nurturing and support where I wouldn't have been able to do so. And that also is a part of our program. I'm very grateful to be here in Sahara's family, to speak to all of you who listen to her podcast and share my love with you. I want you right now just to put your hands on your heart and just feel right now I'm beaming all my love into each and every one of you, letting you know how powerful and amazing and wonderful you are and thank you for being on earth. And if anyone hasn't told you today that they love you, let me be the first, I love you. Thank you, Sahara Rose. Mm, thank you so much. So if you loved this episode, be sure to join us on the Awaken Your Powers Masterclass, where we'll be talking all about abundance. Again, head over to my website, IamSaharaRose.com. You'll see the Awaken Your Powers Masterclass with Shaman Durek, and we are so stoked to have you. And again, don't forget to pre-order your copy of my book, Eat, Feel Fresh, available on Amazon, wherever books are sold. Save your receipt so I'll be able to offer you all the pre-order bonuses I have waiting for you. And if you loved this episode and you'd like a little gift for reviewing it, I would love to send you the first half of my unreleased book. It's called Eat Right for Your Mind Body Type. It is not available for sale anywhere, never will, because now it is Eat Right for Your Mind Body Type 12 week guided program infusing Ayurveda with modern nutritional science. So, as a free gift for reviewing this episode in the iTunes store, you just head over to iTunes on your phone, on your computer, click write a review, write a nice review take a screenshot of it and email it over to me before you hit submit. My email is sahara, S-A-H-A-R-A at eatfeelfresh.com and I will send you back the first half of my unreleased book, Eat Right for Your Mind Body Type. I hope you loved this episode and I'll see you on the next one. Namaste. Namaste. 